Let's suppose that you start with a sample of size 3, which values 3, 4, and 5. So you can compute the average quite easily, as you know, 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 1, 2, and 3 independent values, that is 12 divided by 3, which is 4. How about the variance? Well, you will proceed as each one of the values minus the average value that you compute square, you do this for all the values, and then you divide by the number of independent values. 1, 2, and 3. But is that really independent? Let's now assume that you don't know the last value. We call it y. But you can find it out. Because you know the average, the average is 4, that means that 3 plus 4 plus y divided 3 equals 4. So you can solve and you know that now y equals 5. What that means is that you have only one, two independent values. The third one you can predict it. Therefore, you should divide by 2. Let's now sample from a distribution that we know the mean and the variance. So let's suppose mean equals 4 and the variance is 1. So if we get three random values, for instance, I will ask the computer and the computer generates 3.34, 5.20, We can compute the average. We can compute the variance as in the sum of a square divided by n or the variance as in the sum of a square divided by n minus 1. In that case, 0 0.96, which seems closer to the real value. Let's try again. Let's ask the computer another three random values from the distribution. We get 5.06, 3.84, 3.27, and we get an average of 4.06, quite close to the real one. And then the variance will be divided by n minus 1 is 0 0.91. Ideally, we have to do this 100,000 times, so we can do that. But I won't do it manually. I would use a statistic program called R. That's what we get. What we get is that if we run 100,000 samplings, what we get is that the average of all the average that we compute is around 4, which is a pretty good estimator. On the other hand, the variance, as in the sum of a square divided by n, is not quite close to the expected value. But if we divide by n minus 1, the average of all the sampled variances approaches 1. In summary, if you want to estimate the mean of a population based on a sample of size n, you have n independent points. That is, you have n degrees of freedom. But if you want to estimate the population variance from the sample variance, you have n minus 1 independent points. That is, you have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is a concept that we will revise several times during this module.